Dr. Rick dropping in. It's another segment of Mo Monday's Manly Mandates. Uh, this is going to be a special segment. Uh, there's something extremely important I need to touch on uh, concerning black male mental health, uh, especially along the lines of suicidality. Uh, we have a situation in my tight circle where two young black males unrelated in two different states in their mid-twenties took their lives within two hours apart this weekend um, trying to help family and friends make sense of this is a daunting task uh, i didn't know either of the young men personally but i know people who cared about them dearly and this is something i've been talking about and challenging us on for years i've been talking about the spikes in suicides among young black males and i've been talking about the need to address uh, the gap and the void in proper mental health resources for black men and understanding the uniqueness of suicidality among men versus women i have gone to great lengths to make that happen i'm excited about the fact that we are doing our first um month it's at least monthly it may even be bi-weekly talking to the founder and director of the sunrise project uh, but we're doing our first brothers unfiltered all male session on this thursday at seven eastern time uh, where i'll be moderating uh, the discussion uh, among black men where we get to talk about all the things that uh, we don't get to talk about in any other space where we can be honest and authentic about how we feel the things we face the things we go through uh, that we aren't comfortable admitting or talking about in any other space so I'm definitely excited about that because it's a, it's something that's so necessary on a grand scale and I'm glad to be a part of it uh, being backed by an organization like the Sunrise Project and its sponsors, um, which includes the OWN Network and um, House of Joy uh, Public Relations Company and a few others. So I am immensely grateful for their support on this. Uh, but we need that. Before I go any further on this topic, I want to remind you uh, to click the like button if you see something that's inspiring, encouraging, informative, uh, inspirational. Share it. Subscribe. If you believe in the work that we have done uh, in the areas of research and program development in the areas of domestic violence and intimate partner homicide in the space of building strong black men through a rite of passage, passage initiative, the Black Man Lead, uh, right of passage initiative and all the things we're doing now fighting to address the mental health crisis in our community and more look in the description box and find the link click uh, visit do whatever you need to do based on that information and give to support our work it is so necessary right now all right um, the crazy thing is Sunday, I have this great open session with the Sunrise uh, Project where they have uh, embraced me over the last four years as a resident expert in the areas of trauma. And we had this great session and we talked about a bunch of things. And one of the things we talked about was uh, suicidality and a spike in suicidality among black males. And it really and truly was a great session. It was exciting. Everybody was happy. And I mean, within an hour of getting off, I had another meeting with a client. Uh, well, a potential client at the time became a client uh, about working with their son. And right after that, uh, I got hit with um, the, the news that a young brother had 24 years old had killed himself the day before so saturday um at a roughly around 5 p 
p.m. on Saturday. He killed himself. This was actually here in Houston. And then within an hour of hearing that, um, uh, one of our friends um, at you know the spot where we hang out, she lost her godson uh, who committed suicide two hours later, same day, but in D.C., uh, the fact that they aren't related in any way impacted just shows how connected this world is and how many people who know each other are impacted by things. And I think <clears throat> we talk about all the things that make us manly and we fail to talk about the plight of manhood. We fail to talk about the yearnings of a man, what drives a man. See, we're driven by things differently than what drives a woman, what causes a woman to be fulfilled, what causes a woman to uh, have her sense of uh, self-satisfied. We need to feel that we are filling our roles. We need to feel that we are being protectors, being providers, and it's all defined by our particular sector. Where are we from? Who are we measuring ourselves against? What level are we are trying to, what level are we trying to achieve? And when we don't feel that we're fulfilling that, something is taken from us, something is out of us. And if we get to a point where we sense that there's nothing we can do to be what we're supposed to be. We can feel loss. We can feel unbearably overwhelmed. And far too often we're given very poor advice. Man up. It's going to be okay. This is what we do. Man up. And I'm not saying that you that you, you you don't need to be emotionally tough, that you don't need to have the capacity to push through. But some of the people that I consider to be some of the toughest and the strongest people on the planet, I've lost to suicide. So it's not just that, it's something more. So I started to dig and I started to look. And what I realized, there's a verse on... To Be a Man, which is a song by Dax, a, a Canadian artist. Um, and it's on, the, uh, it's on the mega remix version because he has the, rec the initial song, then he has the remix, remix with Darius Rucker, then he has the mega remix with has like eight artists on it. And the song is dope because it's got some very talented artists on it. Um, but they're spitting real live truths about how we feel as men, what it's like to be a man. Uh, and it's, it, it goes in, but it's one line that just sticks out to me, and there's so many, but it's one line that sticks out to me. It says, no wonder, and, and I'm paraphrasing, no wonder why it's almost all, it's, it's mostly men that commit suicide. Maybe it's because we feel that we're already dead inside. And we have to address this idea of this thought that we're dead and that we need to escape old thinking that suicide is a sign of weakness versus of illness versus um, a sickness versus a sense of hopelessness. Where there is no hope, there is no future. And if there is no future, there is no drive to live. You got to understand, you may have your paradigm set in a way that just the idea of being alive is all the hope you need. And so you don't approach those spectrums, but not everybody has the same developmental construct as you. Not everybody is reared on the same dynamic. Not everybody has had the same psychological interferences as you. And you've got to understand and give people room in the space 
to be real in their own personal reality and be there to provide them with the assistance. But we need to get more inclined into supporting things that will provide the resources for men in spaces. That's why I'm so excited about what's going to happen on Thursdays, because now men are going to know at least once a month, I got somewhere I can go and say some stuff that I probably can't say anywhere else because it's going to be a safe space. There's no digging at anybody. There's no stupid at, uh, questions. There's no stupid conversation. There's no picking on anybody. There's no belittling anybody. None of that's going to be tolerated in this space. This space is your truth is your truth. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to uh, feel that it's legitimate, but I have to respect that that's your truth. That's where healing begins. I can't help you heal if I'm trying to make your illness align with my idea of what life is supposed to be when that's not your experience. I've got to be able to step outside of the box of my own experiences and be willing to admit some people have been through some things that I haven't been through. Some people have seen some things that I haven't seen. Some people have been hurt in ways that I cannot imagine. And people are struggling with these things. And most times men can't say it. I need help it is a sign of weakness. I have a feeling or a sense of inadequacy is a sign of weakness and insecurity. And, and, and it's all these things that we need to say so that we can approach it, so that we can broach the topic to get the healing balm on the wound that is causing the feeling. But nobody wants you to say it. Nobody is comfortable saying it. It's time out. Uh, for putting stigmas in front of the health of our men. There's nothing wrong with saying I need help. There's nothing wrong with saying I don't have the answer. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. There's nothing wrong with saying my marriage is struggling. My marriage is falling apart. I don't know what to do. There's nothing wrong with saying I feel uh, I'm falling apart. That's where you begin the healing process. You got to admit you're where you are. Trying to pretend you know, we, we're programmed to pretend. I'm good. Hey, man, what's going on? How's everything going? I'm good. Man, I ain't heard from me in a while. What's up? I'm good. I'm good. And and, and I get to the point, if I get a, a certain amount of good, I'm good. I say, well, obviously, I'm not reaching out to you frequently enough because nobody's good all the time. It's not that I'm wishing for you to be bad. It's that I need to know when you're not. And if every time I talk to you, you are saying you're good, then I'm not reaching out enough because it's in the moments that I'm not reaching out to you that you're going through something that I need to be there for you. And so I got to get myself more inclined to reach out to you more. And that is the responsibility of a brotherhood is saying, man, not on my watch. It is the responsibility of a brotherhood to sit up and say, you know what? I hear you. It is a responsibility of a brother to sit up and say, I don't have the answer, but I'm here with you. Nobody wants to go through this alone, but everybody feels alone. They're not going to admit it. They're not going to talk about it. They're not going to say it because they don't want to be viewed as weak. They're not going to go and ask for help because they don't want to be viewed as crazy. So they sit there and they suffer in silence. And that cancer of inadequacy, that cancer of anxiety, that cancer of the fear of the future, that cancer of hurt and pain and trauma eats at them until there's nothing left on the inside. And they become internally dead. And in their mind, they're just finishing the job when they take their life. A part of masculinity is admitting your limitations. A part of masculinity is admitting that you need the brotherhood. A part of masculinity is opening up 
to find out how you can heal the wounds that make you better and stronger for your family, for your wife, uh, for those who are looking to you as a sense of of illumination and guidance it's time for us to step up it's time for us to stand up brothers it's time for us to love ourselves enough to heal i don't mean in pretense i mean in truth and not and and, and this is where we start by understanding the value we hold in our communities the value we hold in our homes the value we hold in the sanctity of our uh, uh, of our own existence we are unique and we are special we are worthy of love we are uh, worthy of healing we are worthy of being acknowledged but we have to first love ourselves enough to heal that's my challenge to you look Again, I'm going to challenge you to support our work because there's so much that needs to be done, so much that needs to be built, so much that needs to be carried out and executed. And I'm also going to put the link to this Thursday's all male uh, Brothers Unfiltered event on the Sunrise Project where we come together and we talk about some of the things we can do to facilitate healing in one another. I'm excited about it. Uh, while being very heavy in the heart um, for the people who are suffering at the loss of these two uh, dynamic and wonderful and, and th again, you can't just look at a person and say they're suicidal. They hide it. If you haven't listened to uh, To Be A Man, I encourage you, go YouTube and just type in Dax D-A-X to be a man and type in Mega Remix and listen to these brothers of different backgrounds, different creeds, different religions, different colors talk about what it's like to be a man and for my brothers it's, it's a little extra for us and everybody who's a black man who's really trying to do it understands that and this is just one more reason why we need to come together so once again, I'm challenging everybody. It's time to stand up. It's time to heal because if we can heal our men, the environment they're going to create through that healing and that wholeness is going to be a healing balm for the purity of our women, for the, the wholeness and the spirituality of our women. And it's going to create an environment of empowerment. But if we're not whole, Everything around us starts to fall apart because when we're not whole, we tend to be destructive. If we're not destroying something else, we're destroying ourselves. That's it for now. Look, I'm going to get ready to check out of here. I want to thank you guys for giving me a little extra time on this week's segment of uh, Monday's Manly Mandates. Uh, this is a series on masculinity, black male masculinity. Uh, and I'll see you again on next week. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.